so this webinar is actually designed to foster dialogue, knowledge sharing, and collaboration in harnessing the potential of the executive symbols. The Lucky Deep Sea Port was recently commissioned by the SOI President of the, Fed, of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammadu Buhari, on January the 23rd this year. It is said that the Lucky Deep Sea Port is the Nigeria's largest and West Africa's biggest uh, seaport. Is also said to be the first fully automated port equipped with super post Panama chip to shore cranes and rubber ground lift cranes. It is believed that with this wide capacity and advanced technological facilities, some of the issues in our ports like port congestion, trade imbalance, inadequate modern facilities, and so on, which had contributed to the severe gridlocks of trucks we experienced within our ports, especially the Apapa Wharf ports. The cargo congestions at terminals may be properly and adequately taken care of at the Lake Kitty port. That is the expectation. So at this junction, it is my privilege to introduce the Permanent Secretary of the Federal Ministry of Transport in the person of Dr. Magdalene Ajani to give us a good wee message before we proceed. I don't know if she's a, if she's a Dr. Magdalene. Dr. Jani, are you on? Dr. Jani, are you on? Dr. Jani. Is an experienced medical practitioner. She's also an ophthalmologist. She's the permanent secretary of the Federal Ministry of Transportation. Prior to her current position, she had served as the permanent secretary for service policies. Our strategy in the office of the head of civil services of the Federation. Recently, Dr. Ajani had inaugurated two newly acquired 80 tons bowler pool talk boats by the MPA, Nigerian Post Authority. This acquisition serves to bolster the optimization of this lakey deep sea port. Dr. Ajani, are you on? Okay, maybe when she comes on, she will give a good read message. So that's for the Federal Ministry of Transportation, which is in charge of the maritime sector. So I have the honor and privilege also to introduce the seventh president of the Nigeria Chamber of Shipping in the person of Mr. Mohamed Aminu Uma. Mr. Aminu Uma is a seasoned professional in shipping operations and a member of various ministerial committees. He is also a leading indigenous ship owner and operator in Nigeria. He will be represented by Mr. Musa Seidu. Mr. Musa Seidu is a board member, is a board member of the Nigerian Chamber of Shipping, and he will give us the keynote address for this webinar. 
Mr. Musa, I've seen you online. Please, can you take over and give us your keynote address? Thank you. Uh, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm very happy being here with you, and, uh, all the professionals in the maritime uh, sector. I am here to represent uh, the president of the Nigerian Chamber of Shipping, Haji Amin Omar, who is uh, unavoidably absent and uh, can, will not be able to attend this uh, due to his commitment to attend uh, the funeral for Mrs. Margaret Oratusi, a very key personnel, key icon in uh, this, our maritime uh, industry. Uh, we all know about her departure, and uh, unfortunately, it coincided. This webinar coincided with a uh, uh, funeral uh, today. So I can see that most of our industry people are attending. And that is the reason why I mean, Omar also is not here. And as a matter of fact, I think it will be a very uh, a right thing to do if I should call for a minute silence for this icon in the maritime industry. I ask for your permission to take this one minute silence, please, in honor of Mrs. Margaret Orabson. Thank you, please. We can observe a minute silence. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Um, like I said, uh, my name is Musa Ibn Saidu. I, am, I happen to be a board member with the Nigerian Chamber of Shipping. And so in that capacity, I'm representing our president, Hajamin Omar. I will start, I will be very brief actually, because uh, we have a lot of professionals that are going to do justice to uh, this topic here. Mine will just be an overview. Uh, I hope uh, from there we will take over, the professionals will take over and uh, make justice to it. We, Lagos plays host to Nigeria's two busiest ports. That's the Papa and Tinkan Island ports, which control about 75% of imports and export cargoes. And as far as has for too long been bedeviled, as uh, was said earlier, by persistent gridlock occasioned by unwholesome activities of truckers around the ports area. The situation, apart from its effect on daily movement of motorists, residents, and commuters, in and out of Apapa has crippled businesses in the port city, crash property value in the prime location. Lekki now is Nigeria's first fully automated port and is also the largest. It has more than double the capacity of Lagos ports, which had remained the same for over 25 years or so. And this deep sea port will accommodate the world's largest cargo ocean and is expected to reduce cargo weight times from like over 50 days to just two days. The prospects for this uh, lucky deep sea port are um, as follows in brief. It will certainly be paramount to congestion the labor sports of Apapa and Tinka. The Lake Deep Seaports 
the Nigerian road to development of smart port systems. We used to be having uh, ports that are operating uh, in, in a very manual system before now. But Lakehead Seaport is the first and uh, going to be the road to development of the smart seaports, like I said. It will increase in competitiveness of Nigerian seaports among major seaports in West Africa or even African region. The strategic location of the ports and opportunities for future expansion. This is one of these prospects. The Lake D seaport could serve as a pivot of local and regional developments. We all know that how uh, the Nigerian ports have lost out to, to other erstwhile beta ports like Adomi and Ghana in transshipment of cargoes to interlocked uh, areas like Niger Republic and uh, Chad and others. But uh, the Lake East Deep Seaport now, it even was this opportunity to regain uh, this privilege of uh, transshipment of cargo into the interlocked uh, nations. Capacity. This port is also uh, designed to handle so much tonnage estimated to be like 4 million metric tons of dry goods per year. These are a few of the prospects that we can uh, have with the Lakey Deep Sea Ports. Of course, uh, there are some issues that uh, we can observe with the development of this uh, the deep sea ports. We have the Dangote refinery now. We have uh, the Pinnacle oil and gas terminal. And activities in these free zones will put some pressure on the that axis of Lagos, Ekwe, and definitely we are going to like see a scenario of road traffic lines. That we used to go in the, around the upper area of the former or the present Papa and Tinkham ports. This is an issue that we okay, envisage. The railway absence in the Lakey Deep Sea ports may also be uh, an issue because we need railway to work with bulk imports from the ports. And without the railways, we are still back to using the trucks and trailers, heavy duty on the roads. Uh, and uh, this will turn the lakey axis into a bedlam, same like uh, we were having. So something has to be done, especially about building a railway track that may ease the transportation of this bulk uh, cargo from the deep sea port into the interlands. I also believe there is a need to have a fully functional Harbour Master Office around the Lake Taxis. So that the um, utilization of pilot and drugs from a papa will not be necessary. It will be much easier if we have a pilot station close to the deep sea port. There is also this issue of uh, stakeholders starting to raise concerns about the encroachment of land around the Lake Deep Sea ports. And this now will put any future expansion plan in jeopardy. 
There is also an issue of safety and of navigation of vessels at Lake Edipsi ports and all ports and all ports. This needs to also be looked at. Um, these are just a few of issues that uh, we may be having and uh, I'm very sure it will be looked upon and uh, we will have a better operational uh, seaports. We can also talk about benefits uh, on the Lepi deep seaport to the Nigerian economy. We have already started seeing very big clean product tankers batting at the pinnacle uh, terminal, which is around the Lekki free zone, handling over 120,000 metric tons of petroleum. This is a benefit. This is something that we have never experienced before in the Nigerian ports. Containers also. Big container vessels are now also batting at the Lekki deep sea ports. These are benefits that we are having from, 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 from having the Lekki deep sea ports it's compared to the Apapa and Tinkan and other ports uh, we used to have in Nigeria. It definitely will serve as a hub for maritime trade and commerce, attracting investment and boosting economic growth. The deep sea port is expected to contribute so much uh, to the government exchequer in terms of uh, revenue. We also have to look at the job opportunities that creates. Well, as, as the last count, we have about 170 to 200 direct or indirect uh, employments that can be achieved with the uh, Lekki Deep Sea Port, contributing to the social economic development of Nigeria. The port will bridge the capacity deficit in Nigeria's maritime sector. This is also about. One of the benefits, again, is that it will contribute to the GDP, GDP of Nigeria as the result of increased important terminal handling capacity expected to generate revenue of so much million dollars. Like I said earlier, it will also provide the lost traffic land, uh, of the landlocked uh, countries like Chad and Niger, which we have lost to countries like, uh, um, to ports like Lomi in Togo and uh, Tema in Ghana and so forth. With this, uh, I am sure we have speakers, professionals, who are with us here that uh, will do better justice and digest more of these issues and projects and benefits that we briefly mentioned here because it's a chamber of chicken. So I will gladly uh, pause here and uh, hand over the digestion of uh, this address to the professionals in the panel. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Saidu. Uh, thank you for that insightful address, highlighting the prospects and the benefits as well as the issues that needs to be addressed. I believe, like you said, uh, we have a lot of professionals here, a lot of stakeholders who will do justice, more justice to that. Thank you so much for your address, sir. I don't know if Dr. Ajani is now with us. Yeah. Dr. Ajani, are you on now? Yes, I'm on, good morning. Good morning, madam. You're welcome on board. 
Thank you so Mr. much. Zuladi. Sorry, I'm late. I just flew in from Lagos this morning. We understand. We are welcome. Ma. Okay, so sir. let me go over again with Mr. Magdalene Ajani, is the permanent secretary, well, Federal Ministry of Transportation. She is an experienced medical practitioner an ophthalmologist. She holds the position of permanent secretary of the Ministry, Federal Ministry of Transportation. Prior to her current position, she served as the permanent secretary for service policies and strategy, strategy, sorry, in the office of the head of civil services of the Federation. Dr. Jani recently inaugurated two newly acquired 80 tons bollard pool talk boots by the MPA, Nigerian Post Authority, which will booster the optimization of the Lakey Deep Sea port. All this demonstrates Dr. Jani's commitment to facilitating the growth and development of the maritime industry in Nigeria. Dr. Jani, please give us your goodwill message for this webinar. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm actually glad to be here. Thanks to the organizers for inviting me to this uh, seminar. I want to thank you all, and more in particular, Mrs. Olisa Agbakoba um, team. Um, the team of this uh, webinar, as I'm aware, is Lucky Deep Seaports, the issues mm -hmm. and the prospects for the Nigerian economy. And um, I want to highlight some notable benefits. I listened to part of the presentation by the last speaker. And um, it's good to appraise issues the way they really are. Thank you so much to um, Musa Ibim Seidu. But just to let us know, that the Lekki Deep Sea Port is a general purpose port that was developed through the build, own, operate, and transfer um, method of public private partnership, um, a model of uh, public private partnership. And this arrangement is mainly by private investors, the Tolerant Groups, the China Harbor Engineering Company legal state and the federal government represented by Nigerian Ports Authority. The port is to be developed in two phases on 90 hectares of land with a commencement draft of about 16.5 meter. And at the end of the project, we expect that we should have three container beds, three liquid and one dry bulk bed. And as you are all aware, the phase one of it was commissioned on the 24th of January 3 by the former president of Nigeria, Muhammadu Buhari. And this port has commenced um, commercial operations and is one of the largest seaports in West Africa. And is equipped to contain, accommodate at least 16,000 TEUs and is positioned to serve as a transshipment hub for the whole of Africa. This future we aid definitely to improve foreign direct investments and stimulate economic growth in the country, thereby providing the opportunity for imports and exports and creating jobs and revenue for the country. The Lekki Deep Sea Port is expected to have an estimated aggregate impact of 361 billion US dollars over 45 years in the economy. And this will also, this also offers a multiplying effect of over 230 times the total cost of construction was about 1.53 billion US dollars. The port operation is expected to create 170,000 jobs like uh, Mr. Seydou had mentioned. And revenues, of course, will accrue to both the states and the local governments 
federal government agencies from taxes, royalties, and duties in the range of 201 billion US dollars. The port mm -hmm. is already serving as an alternative port to the existing Apapa and Tinkan Island ports. And because of the automation and the modernization of the ports, it also will reduce vessel uh, waiting time, faster turnaround of vessels, and reduce logistics costs and enhance competitiveness. The Lekki Deep Sea Port is positioned to make Nigeria a major destination of international shipping and global trade. In enhancing the operation of the ports, the ministry through the Nigerian Port Authority acquired two tugboats and um, of the capacity of 80 ton bullet pool, each of them. And this was just commissioned on Friday last week. And this is part of the obligations of the concern agreements uh, where NPA is to provide relevant marine crafts to support the operation and improve the competitiveness of the ports. In facilitating the evacuation of goods from the ports, um, the ministry in conjunction with NPA and Nigerian Railway Corporation is working on developing a rail linkage from the Lekki ports to the existing Lagos Ibadan standard gauge rail network in the country. And so the, the ministry has concluded the feasibility study and route alignment for the rail linkage to the ports while the process for the award of contract is ongoing. And we are hoping that we could also have private investors to come in and uh, deploy this. We've had this conversation with the management of Lekki Deep Sea Ports to look at how to collaborate with uh, private investors to take this uh, rail leakage. We're listening to all the possible um, activities that are ongoing in that region that could actually affect the traffic flow. So having to move out, evacuate goods by road is not one of the options we want to look at at all. In the meantime, the elective support managers have been encouraged to move goods through badges to avoid the Apapa and Tinkan Island congestion. The ministry, in addition to all this, is also facilitating the development of other ports around the country. The Badagri Deep Sea Port is one of them, Ibon Deep Sea Port, Boni Deep Sea Ports, and they are all at different stages of development. And just recently, um, in the last um, administration, the Federal Executive Council has also approved the um, development of Ondo, Burutu, and Snake Island Ports. And this is all to increase the capacity and diversify port operations across the country. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to conclude this address by pledging that the Federal Ministry of Transportation in line with its mandates, we continue to pursue vigorously the development of shipping and maritime related sectors and sustain collaboration with the private sector to ensure a safe, faster, affordable, reliable, and more efficient transport system in the country. I want to wish all of us a beautiful and successful deliberation and uh, thank you for this opportunity. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Jani, for that wonderful good message, which uh, tends to portray what the Federal Ministry of Transportation on behalf of the federal government has been able to do, the expectations and the things the, the government also expects or the expectations from the Deki Deep Sea Port. Thank you, Dr. Jani. Uh, I hope we all as stakeholders in the maritime industry find this webinar high engaging, insightful, fruitful, and beneficial as we look forward a smooth operation of the Lake Deep Sea Port. At this junction, I will now hand over to the moderator of this webinar, the general manager of the Lagos State Waterways Authority, Laswa, in the person of Mr. Oluwadamilola Emmanuel.
Mr. Olua Damilola is the general manager of the Lagos State Water Waterways Authority. He joined the Lagos State Waterways Authority as the secretary in October 2015, before becoming the general manager in 2017. He's a graduate of the University of Lagos and a master's holder from the University of Hull. Olua Damilola, if you are on, please come on and take charge of this. Thank you. Come on. Uh, good morning, everybody. I don't know if you can hear me. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, good morning. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can I hear you? Okay, morning. thank you. Can hear you? Absolutely. Thank you very much. Um, it's an absolute pleasure. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and I would like to first of all just uh, recognize Olisa Bakogwa Liga, uh, this maritime practice group for actually putting this together. This is a very worthy initiative. Um, and let me quickly um, recognize uh, the permanent secretary for the Ministry of Transportation, Dr. Magdalene Ajani. Thank you for that. Um, and to also Let's quickly get to our panelists. Um, I would be leading this panel. And as you know, we'll be exploring prospects and issues for the Nigerian economy, looking at the Lekki deep sea port. Um, so I will just quickly run through those who are on this panel. Um, and we will be starting, of course, with um, uh, Mrs. Adesu Aladoja. So we'd like you to be on standby knowing that you're going to start this. Um, but let me just give a brief opening remark. Um, and then I would introduce um, the, the, the panelists. Well, it's a pleasure today as I welcome you all to the Maritime Webinar on Lekki Deep Sea Port, um, Prospects and Issues for the Nigerian Economy, uh, hosted by Olisa Bakuba Liga. This Maritime Webinar and topic is particularly one of the essential ingredients of the future of Nigerian maritime ecosystem. They affords us a common ground to discuss the prospects of the Lekki Deep Sea Port, the first deep sea port in Nigeria, confront its challenges, uh, and of course, explore the opportunities. It would interest you to know that 28 out of 36 states in Nigeria are actually accessible by water, and this presents Nigeria with an advantage of endless possibilities to accrue maritime benefits. The Apapa Port Complex is the biggest seaport in Nigeria, while substantial improvements have been made over the years, the port can be said to be effective, but not yet fully efficient because of its maximum function faced by perennial issues that affects the ease of doing business in around the port environment. This forum offers us an opportunity to be proactive uh, and not reactive to the effective and efficient management and peak operationalization of the Lekki Deep Sea Port. The importance of the maritime industry to the Nigerian economy cannot be overemphasized as it affords us the opportunity to harness fully the enormous resources of global tourism and the blue economy, which is crucial to global supply chains, allowing for the provision of supplies, food, and other basic goods that are critical for sustainable development. Once more, ladies and gentlemen, I would just like to say Let's allow this ship sail. Uh, and I believe that by the time we've ended this um, um, seminar, um, we would have gained, uh, this webinar, sorry, we would have gained a lot. Um, and we would have been able to not just think about the theoretical aspect of things, but also the practical aspect of things. Thank you very much. So let me quickly introduce the panelists. Um, right first on the panel list is Mr. Desu Aladoja. She's the executive director of the Lekki Port, um, Lekki Free Trade Zone Enterprise Limited. You're welcome. She will be looking at things from the promoters and operators perspective. Next, we also have Mr. Lawrence Smith, who is also the chief operating officer for the Lekki Port, um, Lekki Free Trade Zone Enterprises Limited. You're also welcome. He'll be looking at things as well from the promoters, operators perspective. We also have the uh, Managing Director, MPA, uh, Mr. Mohamed Belokoko, who is represented by engineer L.O. Izzy, who is the Assistant General Manager, uh, Corporate and Strategic Planning uh, for the Nigerian Port Authority. 
Uh, and finally, we also have Princess Dr. Victoria Ayadeli Hastrop, who is Executive Vice Chairman of ENL Consortium, but she's represented here today by Mr. Mark Walsh. So panelists, you're welcome. Um, and at this point, I'll hand over to Ms. Adesu Aladoja to please give us her uh, 10 minutes, <laughs> 10 minutes, um, her own remarks, so 10 minutes. Thank you so much, Ms. Aladoja, you can unmute. Good morning. I hope everyone can hear me. Yes, please. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, excellent. Um, first of all, thank you um, to Olisa Bakoba for convening this webinar to discuss Lekki Deep Sea Port. It came as a very pleasant surprise to be told that we we're going to be bestowed this honor. And um, it's interesting because we all talk about Lekki Port so much internally, and it's interesting to see that you know, everyone in the ecosystem, the maritime ecosystem, is also interested in talking about Lekki Port, its prospects, the issues around it, and how they can be overcome, so that the port truly becomes that game changer that we all wish it to be. So thank you for this, and I believe that this will be the first in many, many um, other opportunities to discuss and collaborate on how we can make Lekki Port true game changer. I want to recognize the presence of uh, Dr. Madeline Nani, the PS of um, uh, Ministry of Transportation, who has been very supportive to us in Lekki Port. And we also recognize all the other um, gentlemen and ladies on this call, on this webinar, and thank you for being with us. A lot has been said by those who have spoken before us on Lekki Port. Um, so it's difficult to see what angle to come from, but I will discuss from the promoter's perspective while our COO will talk about issues from the operational point of view. Um, Lake Report was developed, um, the vision was developed by Telegram Group. And this all started many, many years ago, 2003, under the president, Olusegun Obasanjo uh, presidency. And it all started because it's not today that we all realize that we needed a, a port that could really speak to our aspirations, that could help our economy grow much further than it was at presently. So in 2003, the Tolerant Group approached the presidency at the time to say Nigeria needs a deep sea port. You need something that is uh, suitable to the status of Nigeria in Africa and indeed all around the world. The president at that time also saw reason with this and granted a presidential approval. And that started the journey of Lekki Deep Sea Port. Lekki Deep Sea Port is unique in many ways. And um, Dr. Jani, you know, alluded to some of, some of those um, unique points. First of all, Lekki Port is EPP, and is a collaboration between federal, state, and private investors. That is something that is extremely unique and as a model that has never been uh, operated before for developing these kind of projects. And as you can imagine, while it came with um, many advantages, it also came with a lot of challenges, which the promoters had to deal with one after the other in a collaborative manner, ensuring that we um, developed a win-win approach for the investors and for the government for the benefit of Nigeria. The Lekki Deep Seaport is located in a free trade zone, which again, conferred a lot of benefits on Lekki Port itself in terms of the exemption, the exemption, uh, the tax um, status and regime under the NEBSA Act, which Lekki Port will now enjoy because it's an enterprise in a free trade zone. Again, that came with some challenges because as a port, the, uh, the uh, regulator will be the Nigerian Ports Authority. But being located in a free trade zone, we are also subject to the oversight of NEBSA, which, um, and Lagos Free Zone is the zone manager on behalf of NEBSA. So again, issues arose that needed to be resolved to ensure that the two regulators are able to coexist in a manner that enhances the people and doesn't increase the difficulty for um, customers to operate in Lekki Port. So 
So again, everything that has a strength in Lekiford came with issues to be resolved, but the important thing was there has always been collaboration. There's always been that interest for the success of the port. So everybody has done what they need to do in the time frame in which they have to do it to be able to move forward. Toleran was joined by China Harbor Engineering Company as co-investor, foreign investors for this project. That, again, um, was something that was very important because as you can imagine, funding of such a huge project was something that we needed to look at very carefully, ensure that we have the complete funding to be able to start the construction so that we could construct within a time frame, complete it, and begin our operations. So China Harbor came on board with equity funding to join Toleram. And this speaks to the foreign investment regime that is applicable in Nigeria that allowed foreigners to come to Nigeria and provide funding for this project. They saw that Nigeria was stable. They saw that the um, economy was robust enough to take such a huge um, venture. And they had confidence that all the legal agreements and the um, promises that are made will be respected. And this is true different um, re, um, governments. So we started in our government, so you can imagine how many governments we've gone through. And through all that time, this system has been robust enough, it has been strong enough to ensure that whatever the, um, agreements were, were made were honored by successive um, governments, successive ministers, successive um, managing directors of the Port Authority. And this is the point that we really need to give kudos to the Nigerian government for that they stayed with the process until the port was constructed and now operational. We really need to give the government high praise for that. Another significant factor in, for Lekki Port is the fact that for once, we have Lagos State, the state government, NPA representing federal government, working together as one to ensure the success of the port. So the challenges of existing ports whereby for instance, if you raise the issue of roads, um, you are told that the roads are state roads, so federal cannot intervene, will not occur in Lekki Port because Lagos state government, um, federal government are both represented in the port structure, the share structure, the regulatory structure. So they both work hand in hand to resolve whatever challenges that we're having. Um, Dr. Janine mentioned earlier about the issue of, the, of, of rail. And Lagos State has been working with the federal government, Federal Ministry of Transportation, Nigeria Railway Corporation, with Lagos State are talking to us on the need to get this um, on board. And of course, talking to us about private investment, are talking to us about private investment to be part of this process. So this um, model is one that should increasingly be utilized for doing huge infrastructure projects. Maritime, um, transportation, rail, this is really the way forward. And I think that Lekki Port showcases these things in a lot of ways. Another um, interesting uniqueness about Lekki Port from the uh, viewpoint of the promoters is the fact that there were many agencies, there were many approvals, there were many permits that needed to be obtained. At the initial time of um, resolving the agreement, we were obliged to get over 40 permits from different agencies, state and federal, to get the port um, certified as fully compliant with all the relevant laws of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. As you can imagine, it was a challenge and it was extremely expensive. But we went through it because we are a company that um, and our promoters stress the point of being compliant with all the relevant laws and regulations. As an issue for going forward for the new ports that are going to be developed, one wonders if some of these um, uh, permits and approvals and uh, you know, applications that were made, if they couldn't be compressed, reduced, condensed, such that you didn't have to go through all of that. 
you know, um, a one-stop shop, so to speak, to get some of this. Some, in fact, some agencies where there are duplications, for instance, one wonder if that if it really increases the cost of setting up a structure like this, especially with government being involved. So that's something that you know interesting for us to to to, to see and see how we can reduce it. Um, this is a project that has um, debt funding, and our promoters it was very important uh, for us to get the funding complete. Like I said earlier, and China Development Bank provided. Um, uh, a loan facility for Lekki Port, and we've been drawing, we've been drawing that, drawing down on that. Again, making sure that we had the right agreements in place with the government. So we had a concession agreement issued by the Nigerian Ports Authority. It was an agreement that was, um, it took a long time to this to draft and negotiate because, as you can imagine, this is very new um, to all of us. But it was prepared by you know very experienced lawyers in the Nigerian Ports Authority. Uh, we had Nansel Zimwan, we had uh, Mr. Omar, we had Mr. Wanka, and they were all you know part of the team that drew up this initial documentation. It was amended, and they also dealt with uh, lawyers from different sides of the table. And because we had those rich agreements that you know took care of practically everything that you can imagine. We were able to clear the due diligence from the banks, and we have a federal government guarantee, which again protected um, the lenders, should in case there will be any challenges. Um, the another point I would like to mention is, now that the port is operational, one of the things that we are looking at is how to ensure that the agencies that are on, on site are working in tandem with each other, in cooperation with each other. And uh, our CEO will, will speak more on this issue. But we need a port community network such that all the agencies are able to coordinate themselves effectively online without needing to be physically present in the port space as is done in developing countries of the world. So um, thank you for allowing me to speak on Lekki Port. Um, and look forward to the question and answer session. If you leave us to talk about Lekki Port, we can speak for two hours. Um, but thank you for my 10 minutes, which I suspect are over stressed. Thank you, Mr. Emmanuel. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Ms. Lado. That styles and an uh, absolutely good foundation for us to take off on. Please let us implore all panelists once again to make sure you have your videos on. Um, the organizers would love for you to have your videos on. Well, thank you so much for that. Um, and I think I just, before we get on to the next um, panelist who's going to speak, and that's Ms. Lawrence Smith, the COO. Um, I, I, was very, I, was very, I was happy to hear certain things you mentioned. Um, you spoke about, you, you taught collaboration, which I think is very, very key and has seen to the success of um, the Lekki Deep Sea Board. And I thought of the Lekki Deep Sea Board as having so many lives, having survived so many administrations, but that's a very good one. And we're happy that it's finally taken off. And we're just, I mean, I, I can't over, over emphasize this point of the fact that we need to just make sure we're proactive, that we don't react and it doesn't happen. Uh, the same thing that's happened to a power port doesn't happen to the Lekki Deep Sea Port. So we have to ensure that we keep these engagements up and then keep these collaborations up. Okay, Mr. Lawrence Smith, um, COO, Lekki Port, Lekki Future Zone. Um, the floor is yours. Can we have your video up and your, you're going to mute, sir. On chat, on chat next to uh, next <laughs> So good morning, Mr. Emmanuel. Um, as a, as I said, said um, I'm very, very honored to be invited to this uh, webinar with all the esteemed guests and special mention to uh, Permanent Secretary, Dr. Anjani of the Federal Ministry of Transportation and the rest of our esteemed guests, good morning and uh, thank you once again. Just some facts about the, uh, the port itself, uh, especially the container terminal, which is up and running now. And from my own personal point of view, I'm always excited when I go down there because Nigeria now has this state-of-the-art, world-class facility that is setting global standards. So I'm very, very excited every time that I go to the port myself. So it has the largest marine structure in Nigeria. The breakwater is uh, 1.9 kilometers long. 
It is the deepest seaport in West Africa with a draft of 16.5 meters, which can be um, extended to 19.5 meters. The turn and circle is 600 meters, which uh, can accommodate some of the largest container vessels in the world. The ship shore cranes are the largest ship shore cranes we've ever seen in Nigeria. And we have the newest state of the art container handling equipment with the rocket tire gantry cranes, our, our terminal tractors, etc. And the port is fully automated. There are no physical transactions within the port. It is all, it is all stemmed from the Navis N4 system, which runs the whole port itself down to the last uh, section of it. We also have a VBS system, vehicle booking system. So you cannot just turn up to the port. You have to have a booking to come to the port. That is also uh, incorporated with the OCR, optical uh, character recognition system at the port gate as well. So the whole system itself is completely automated. So uh, which adds efficiency and improves turnarounds for vessels and uh, the, the trucks themselves. The capacity of the port, phase one, is 1.2 million TEU, which is just about the same as what the throughput in Nigeria is today. There is also a bulk facility to be contended with going into phase two, and a liquid berth, three liquid berths on the breakwater that can handle up to one, 160,000 dead vessels. And we are in discussion now about how we start the concessions with those um, liquid berth customers. So if we talk about prospects and, and impact, the investment for the board itself is about $1.5 billion. Uh, the concession period is over 45 years, with potentially another 25 years extension. The estimated revenues, et cetera, from this is uh, around about $361 billion, which has been mentioned before. And the economic impact in the community and outside of the community is around about 170,000 jobs. However, if we consider indirect employment from construction, leisure, industry, and retail, this could go up to 250,000 and, and more. So if we talk about cargo evacuation, and I know that we're talking to your authority in, in relation to this, some people talk about barging evacuation as an inefficient way of doing things. And as you said, 26 of the 30-odd states in Nigeria have waterways. And we are now looking at how we can explore and extend the capacity from the port into these waterways right through Nigeria itself. And there will be further ongoing discussions with that. Infrastructure, the road system, and we have to thank the, uh, the government for what they're doing with the road system at the moment, and it's coming along apace. Uh, with the six-way highway, the FAE, to Eleko Junction is completed and it is a fabulous uh, road system. The coastal road is being completed as we speak and um, up to the port to Eleko Junction and that's the fast pace. We mentioned about the rail. These also will add employment into the infrastructure for uh, Nigeria. We're talking about barging, increased capacities, more employment in there, ports coming up along the river systems throughout um, Nigeria. So the railway, if we talk about the railway, and hopefully when the railway does um, start, it will open up corridors into the north of the country. And we talk about the landlocked countries in the hinterland, Chad, Niger, etc. They also open up into uh, a rail system of transshipment from the port itself. If, if we talk about uh, rail in other parts of the world, Europe, for example, they evacuate about 30% of their cargoes by rail. The US, I believe, is up to 70%. So we can see the benefits here. It also reduces the carbon footprint of the port itself, decongests the road, which is what we would all like, and further enhances employment. We also talked about transshipment and West Africa as a whole. I always like to compare uh, Nigeria to the UK. Both the UK and Nigeria are uh, destination origin cargo um, countries. The UK has about 60 million people and it has a throughput of about 20 million TEU. Nigeria has an excess of about 220 million people and we have a throughput of about 1.5 million TEU. So there is that opportunity out there to grab that cargo and bring it back to Nigeria where it belongs. 
So by doing this, what we need to do is if we can attract the transshipment cargoes on the larger vessels, that will automatically attract the destination origin cargoes back into Nigeria and further boost the economy for the country itself. Uh, the NPA, when we talk about marine services, and I was fortunate enough to be invited to the dedicated for the two new tugs, these will also enhance the efficiencies of the, um, the port itself, along with the new pilot cutters and mooring boats. The channel uh, for navigation has been completed. It's just over nine kilometres, and it comes into the turning basin. Navigational aids are all in place, and the NPA have had their uh, simulation training and have brought in up to now seven vessels. The simulation has taken up to 18,000 TEU vessels, and in phase two, the channel itself can be expanded to 200 metres and 19.5 metres in depth. Um, some of the challenges that we face, the, the port itself is not on the, the grid for electricity, so the port is run by our own power plant, diesel generators. So we, we would like to think that in, into the future that some will be considered for that, so that we can start looking at sustainable fuels, fuels sorry, and further improve the carbon footprint and reduce the pollution that is outgoing at the moment. Also, when we talk about employment and the community, we work very, very closely with the community and CSR developments. But there's also a lot of talent in Nigeria, and we want to tap into that for future. Um, I've got a note here that says there's something like 10% of uh, the Nigerian population is uh, at university at the moment. I don't know how true that is, but you can see the, the ability of the Nigerian uh, young people in this country wanting to learn and wanting to help expand this country to the global superpower that it may become in the future. So with that note and those uh, aspirations and hopes, thank you for listening to me. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Lawrence Smith. Uh, you did exactly eight minutes, so you saved us two minutes. Quite generous <laughs> of you. <laughs> You're thank welcome. you so much. Thank you so much. So you, you, you also, uh, you also touched on the point of the fact that um, it's entirely automated, which I think it's uh, a great advantage as well. See that um, we are we are gradually making progress um, with the with the ports, and we're hoping that the button as well would obviously take it from where the lake has stopped as well. So when we have a functional walking in Lagos, it would help, of course congestion and aid development. Well, next, um, I'll be calling now Mr. Um, the M the MPA Mohammed Bello, uh, presented by Engineer OEZ, General Manager, Core and Strategic Planning. The floor is yours, sir. Good morning. Morning, the organizers, uh, Mr. Abakoba. And yeah, it is here. So, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, please, we can hear you. You can proceed. Okay, then. Good morning, uh, the organizers, uh, Mr. Olisa Abakoba, legal practitioners, the permanent secretary of uh, Federal Minister of Transport, um, officers from. The yes, we can. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Our uh, officers from Lake Deep Seaport, ladies and gentlemen, like the moderator has uh, mentioned, uh, I'm engineer Lewis. I'm representing the MD of Nigerian Port Authority. I've listened to the presentations made by you know the other speakers, and then uh, again we are all excited that Lake Deep Seaport has come on stream. Uh, Coming on stream of Lake Deep Seaport will obviously have a, a very positive impact on the economy. It will also have very positive impact on the fortunes of Nigerian ports of technology. And then uh, MPA as regulators, we are also working tirelessly to make sure we support the operations of uh, Lake Deep Seaport. Uh, as it is with the Port Act, uh, we own the ports, but of course, section seven and eight also give us the powers to lease out you know, some of these uh, services. And that is why 
we have gone into concession agreement with Lakey Deep Sea Port to build, operate, own, and transfer the Lakey Deep Sea Port. We are happy that all here are discussing the impacts and the prospects. Now, as regulators, like some of the speakers have mentioned, issues with several government agencies, part of the responsibilities we take up is liaising with all these government agencies to ensure that to ensure that they have synergy, synergy, and then to make it easy for the operators to also deliver, you know, the expected uh, services. Now, if we look at the functions we are supposed to perform, marine, marine services, yes, we have provided, you know, some platforms. We have provided the uh, two uh, 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 talk books. The permanent secretary also mentioned it in her speech. We have delivered two 80 ton bulletproof tugboats for towage services. Two more tugboats are also being constructed and they will be delivered in due course. In that way, towage services uh, will be enhanced and it will also support the operations of a Lakey Deep Sea Port. Now, we have also made orders for provision of uh, uh, pilot quarters. Those pilot quarters will help our pilots to render piloting services. Like one of the speakers mentioned, you know, that they want the Harbor Master's office in Lakey, Lakey Deep Sea Port. Yes, we are aware of that. We have also uh, made arrangements uh, for the construction of common user marine services, and that includes building of a control tower in Lakey Deep Sea Port. And the control tower will be centrally located to serve all the other ironing facilities like the Dangote refinery, the Pinnacle Oil, Lakey Deep Sea Port, and perhaps other facilities that may come up within that corridor. In the interim, we have been providing skeletal uh, piloting services for most of the vessels when they call pilots go to the freeway boy to accompany them to the port is an interim measure. It won't take long before uh, some of these uh, services are provided. Now, seaport, because it's a deep seaport, there are some advantages that come with you know, projects of this magnitude. They have direct access. And then of course, the channels are already there. It is our duty to ensure that these channels are well maintained and then the channels are also being dredged. We are also aware that VTS, no traffic services, are supposed to be up and running. We have made arrangements. We have actually uh, given uh, contracts to, uh, and very soon, once they you know, submit you know, their reports, uh, go ahead with the uh, construction of facilities that would uh, support uh, VTS systems in Lake Deep Sea Port. Now, like I mentioned, uh, we also have a vendor who is providing public services and we have provided the uh, uh, boats. We also are available to provide salvage and rescue operations. And then um, on the issue of uh, transportation cargo, uh, the permanent secretary has told us uh, plans to link the Lagos railway line. If that happens, that Lake Deep Sea Port can easily, especially those ones you know, uh, going to the hinterland, can also be transported through railway. But in the interim, uh, 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 evacuation to uh, coastal vessels well, uh, by badges and the rest. Uh, this uh, arrangement is already in place, and then uh, we expect, you know, that uh, when this cargo is evacuated to uh, uh, coastal channels, it will reduce pressure on the roads, you know. And then as time goes on, we will also uh, provide more support. Now, the uh, uh, representative from Lakey DC Port talked about the port community system. Yes. MPA, we have also been in talks with IMO and uh, they have recommended a consultant who is working on what community 
system project. And that port community system project, when it comes on stream, it will create a lot of you know, avenue, a lot of opportunities for uh, uh, collaboration. Some of these agencies, once we have a common platform, the port community, it will be easy to resolve issues very good time. And the good news here is that the port is automated. So that if we just have an electronic in, uh, a data touching system, it's easy for us to communicate and resolve issues you know, uh, uh, promptly as they come up. Now, um, other, other uh, uh, proposal that we have, you know, to make the port viable and to make it operation is that we have provided the navigational aids to boys and then all of it. Our pilots are there. And then we have created an administrative structure, operational and administrative structure to bring operations in making deep support into our Oracle uh, uh, software, into our revenue invoicing management system so that <clears throat> the issue of payments will not be a problem. You know, our personnel are there already. And we're happy that Lakey Deep Seaport also provided uh, infrastructure in form of office accommodation for them, you know. And then on our part, we're always ready to support them, to work with them. We will not uh, relent in our efforts to continue to liaise with government agencies That may have oversight functions on the key to reduce this or uh, uh, delays that might negatively affect. Talked about you know some positive impacts like job creation. Yes, which is true. And then also uh, 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 positive uh, impacts. We are ready uh, to go to any length to also support making deep support operators to ensure that these objectives are, you know, uh, realized. Now, um, uh, the the whatever benefits that come from the operation of Lake Airport is a boost to Nigerian economy, a boost to NPA. First of all. The major reason why the Lake Deep Sea port project was uh, canvassed early enough was because of increased demand for port services and then the gaps that were there. If you look at our port statistics over the years, what we've been delivering annually is about 1.6 million TUs, but we've installed capacity in Lake Deep Sea port up to 2.7 million TUs. You begin to see the huge leap. And so uh, we cannot. Uh, uh, we cannot in any way not to work hard to ensure that the deep support objectives are realized because it is an, in our interest, it is in the interest of the nation, and it is also in the interest of the operators. Uh, I, I wouldn't uh, uh, take so much time in. I want to express my department secretary for all the speeches they have made that we have learned and we continue to learn. And then we pledge our support and cooperation at all times. Thank you very much. To questions. Thank you very much, uh, Engineer and you did very well with time. Uh, they, they are actually there to, uh, to help support the other port infrastructure that's already on ground. With the uh, preference in the market now for large Panamax uh, container vessels, it is uh, likely that this trend will continue uh, and that uh, these bigger vessels will be coming more and more to, to Nigeria. 
Lucky Deep Sea Ports is that is now the uh, the the new bride of the area and the uh, valuable infrastructure for this nation. It will help Nigeria to finally try to position itself as the real hub of all West African maritime trade. Larger container vessels with drafts and uh, maneuverable limitations can't go to Tin Can and Apapa. This will enable, enable Nigeria to enhance container traffic far above the current and the COVID levels. Let's not try to invent uh, the, the wheel again, but let's look at some of the ports inside and outside Nigeria that in the maritime, because uh, I've been coming to a lot of these, uh, this is the first time for a web, webinar, but normally seminars, uh, to, to look at the problems that we face in Nigeria. Over the past 40 years, uh, we've, uh, we, we've been talking, we've been making uh, the idea that, okay, let's make these changes. But over 40 years, we haven't made a lot of changes. This port is the biggest change and a real uh, game changer for Nigeria. This gives us the opportunity to work in collaboration with each other and to be able to do, do something that will make Nigeria that hub. Because small ports like Lome are becoming the, the hub area for a, a lot of these shipping lines. And that should not be the case. So when we look at a Papa port, uh, it was built in the early 1900s and mainly was only used for export cargo from uh, the, the northern part of Nigeria. The colonial uh, uh, government here was only using the port to move product out of Nigeria. So now that we're now having millions of tons of cargo coming in with only one road in and one road out of Apapa, it was inevitable that there would be congestion. Planning was only for the day and not for the future and not for the lifetime of the port. Let's not make that same mistake with the Lecky port because Lecky port is in a great area for being able to move ships in and out quickly. What we need to do is, is look and plan for the future. I wanna look at the port uh, of Shanghai, which I mentioned earlier. And, and uh, they were having, starting to have a lot of congestion in the Shanghai port. So the Chinese government sat down and wanted to try to figure out, okay, what can we do? They sat and they planned and they looked in the future needs of a deep uh, and, and put in a deep sea port. What they had to do was build the infrastructure there to make the port viable. So what they, had, what they ended up doing is building a 32.5 kilometer road, which took them two years. And it's, it's one of the long, longest bridges in the world. And this was only to cater to the truck traffic that was coming into uh, this new deep sea port. They also built a train, stain, a, a train station at the end of the bridge on the mainland to evacuate the containers. Then they put in a, a wind farm to provide power that's needed to for the port and for the bridge to be able to operate 24 hours a day, seven days a week. With planning and with the willpower of the Nigerian government, we can do the same. As Lekki Deep Sea Port develops, government needs to concentrate on the hinterland infrastructure and the efficient running of their port. Otherwise, Lekki Port it will face the same problem as a pop-up in the near future, if not now. Roads and bridges and barging capabilities are needed to aid the smooth evacuation of cargo. Although power is an important need in, in the Lekki area, uh, I hope government will be able to meet with the Dangote group since they opened up this petrochemical plant, and they said they have enough power to be able to generate 24-7 uh, for five states, I would hope they could provide full generation and power for the port, which will make, take a, a heavy burden off of uh, the, the Lucky Port operators. Another major issue 
So I didn't want to go into all, each of the different issues. I wanted to, to pick a few of them. And the second one is the legal framework and the protection of the Nigerian government and the investors of Lake, uh, Lekki Deep Sea Port. In most countries, there's a strong and robust laws that regulate deep, deep sea ports. In the United States, for instance, uh, the US uh, Deep Water Act 1974 has evolved over the years to encompass all aspects of the port. The act is specific to define the ports, the deep water ports, where their locations can be, the draft limitations, the structural uh, specifications, and the container handling capacities. As the act evolved over the years, it was, it was, it was uh, amended in 1984, 1990, 1995, 1996, which took into account uh, marine uh, environment, construction, and maintenance of the port facilities. Later, the act was amended again uh, with the Maritime Transportation Security Act of 2002. Because of the changes in conditions in importation and actually the changes in the world as a whole, it added importation of uh, natural gas uh, to the deep water port. And later, after the 9 11 attacks, it, it changed the safety requirements and the security issues that are now facing ports throughout the world. Deep water ports can now handle nat natural gas and uh, they're all under the ISPS code uh, was adopted by each of them. So in the environment it changes year after year and for terminal operators, we face the same problem with, with, with government on the port and harbor bill. It was supposed to amend the uh, NPA Act and uh, appoint a regulator to the port industry. Government up till now uh, hasn't been able to, or the, the bill was passed, but it wasn't signed by the, uh, the, the former president. So we're basically back to square one. So if we want Lecky to grow and flourish, we need to support them in all the different ways from infrastructure to uh, their uh, legal framework. One of the things I, I just want to discuss that before we go to uh, d discussing uh, questions and things is the African, uh, the West African hub status. Government needs to do what they can to help uh, help the port to be able to get this, because the thing is, if we only take cargo from a papa and from tin can and move it to Lekki, we're not really improving the, the Nigerian economy in general. We'll be taking uh, cargo from, from one area to the other, really only changing from one hand to the other. And it's really not improving the whole port op uh, operations. What we need is this West African cargo. I mean, 67% 60 of the cargo that's coming to the whole West African sub-region belongs to Nigeria. A lot of it's not stopping here for reasons of uh, problems in, with customs duties and also the government uh, list of uh, 48 banned items. So a lot of this cargo that it ends up coming into the Nigerian market, but it doesn't actually come through the Nigerian ports. It usually comes over the border through uh, other West African ports. That's a big loss for Nigeria, both in custom duties and uh, in handling charges through, through the port. So we need to make sure we, we get this West African cargo and also any uh, hinterland uh, countries in, in, the, in the northern part that are landlocked. We need that cargo to run through Nigeria. It will improve Lekki's profitability and also improve uh, Nigeria's economic uh, situation. And one thing is that uh, the, everyone's talking about uh, future political deep water ports, deep sea ports in Nigeria. I know it's, it's important to, uh, for each of the pol uh, politicians to, to look and see that these ports can assist and help the, 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 their local areas. But uh, the, to add more and more ports, we need to have the volumes of cargo. 
I mean, right now is that the uh, volumes this year have gone down around 30% uh, across the board and uh, all, all, all the different uh, aspects, if it's containers, if it's, I think vehicles are down 60%, uh, general cargo overhead is down around 25 to 30%. So when we talk about we're gonna add more and more ports, it's something that needs to be economically looked at very closely because we don't want to create a lot of white elephants along the coast of, uh, of, of Nigeria. It's very important that we use the money that we, that, that we need to have for the infrastructures actually to build and to make Lekki Port more and more viable. So I'll stop there and uh, congratulate the, uh, the, the, the operators of this uh, web, webinar. Thank you for, for your time. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mark Walsh. Uh, very vital points uh, you raised, especially around benchmarking uh, to be able to ensure that um, we can fully optimize uh, the ports. Um, and of course, you mentioned the word planning. I heard that word like five or six times. Very important because as we plan, uh, we'll definitely ensure that we can um, think about possible issues in the future. Very important in terms of expansion. Um, and other things related to that as well. And of course, um, you spoke about the fact that um, um, the, the, the loss of, of this cargo, uh, of which Nigeria is currently suffering. Um, you know, um, just about a few weeks ago, I was in a room with other Africans, um, 13 other African countries were in the room of and there were about 43 of us, or sort of public sector leaders, uh, and there was a big joke on, on Nigeria and they kept saying, well, we're taking a lot from you. Well, just a few weeks ago, I'm sure you heard about four subsidies. So my colleagues from Togo have been calling me and now begging me and saying, hey, we want, please <laughs> help me back with the subsidy. I said, no, we just started with you. So don't worry, the cargo one, we will definitely, I'm sure the current administration obviously has that on its, uh, on its, uh, on its, um, on its front, on the front burner and are going to prioritize that. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I think that's it for thank us you. in terms of the panelists. Um, we will now be moving on to the questions. Um, and I know that um, there's a question and answer part where if you have any questions, please put your question there. We're meant to take as a noun, just four questions. Uh, um, of course, the four questions, please panelists, I would like for you to listen very closely to the questions because those questions we'll probably be answering answering them um, we'll take four questions but if time permits then we might be able to take some more so i'll go straight to the um uh, the questions box and look at the first question okay i have a question here um yes i have the first question here from dr ambrose orogo uh and this question is to mpa so uh engineer is please I'll just listen to this question is actually for you they said, how do you intend to attract transshipment cargo to Lekki Deep Seaport, given the obvious evacuation limitations? Uh, and this question is for um, Engineer Eze from MP. And let me read, he says that, when should we expect the major Nigerian coast waters, that is example, Barrow, Makodi to Lagos, to be navigable through the year? Uh, uh, so, yes, that, that's the question for you, um, Engineer Izzy. That's the question for you, Engineer Izzy. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much. Now, the issue of uh, 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 inland waterways, so that is uh, making the channel uh, to Makodi navigable, uh, uh, dredging of the channel is actually uh, not directly under the purview of Nigerian Post Authority. Nevertheless, um, we will also not hesitate to liaise with NIWA and then also the Ministry of Transportation. I'm happy the Permanent Secretary is here. Uh, we will uh, liaise with them and then uh, also uh, attempt to work out uh, modalities on how to uh, uh, dredge our channel if it is actually uh, 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 found that dredging the channel is going to uh, uh, improve, you know, uh, 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 cargo transport 
you know, uh, along the coasts, you know, uh, that is evacuation of cargo from Lake Ibi. So um, um, it is not completely under the purview of Nigerian Post Authority, but we will liaise with NIWA and then the ministry and uh, explore uh, the possibility of making sure that that channel stretched to make it navigable. I don't know if uh, I have uh, answered the question. You have the first part. The first part said, "How do you intend to attract transshipment cargo to Lake Deep Sea Port, given the obvious okay. limitations?" Okay, limitations of transportation and all that. Well, um, just like the uh, uh, proponents of Lake Deep Sea Port made us to understand, the idea of the uh, deep sea port is not to interfere or to go and take up cargo from Tinkan Island, Lagos port or other ports in Nigeria. They want to you know, attract you know, new patronage from around the West Coast and beyond. Now, one way to also attract you know, uh, uh, patronage to the deep sea port is by reaching out, is by also uh, um, uh, 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 reaching out to uh, port users port within Nigeria and within the West Coast. And then if Lake Deep Sea Port operations come fully on, on stream, and then they see that the efficiency in the port is very high, that will bring about a lot of benefits. The you know, port costs will be low, and that will make that port attractive. Most times, importers and exporters what they want is where they will have, get excellent service at you know, very reasonable cost. And I believe that Lakey, once it comes fully operational, you know, we're going to have uh, you know, some of these uh, efficiencies uh, in the first place because the facility has made provision for accommodating very large vessels. We will also enjoy the benefits of uh, you know, uh, uh, the economies of uh, large scale. So, Nigerian Post Authority, in collaboration with the uh, operators of Lake Depot, will go out and then, you know, uh, uh, canvas for patronage by attending seminars, you know, organizing exhibitions outside the country, letting them know that look, we have a modern port, a modern port that you know we're going to provide uh, very excellent services and at very uh, minimal costs. So that is the plan. That is what MPA will do. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for that. Um, I don't know if we still have the permanent secretary. I know she's, she's really very, very busy. I don't know if permanent secretary, I don't know if you understand anything about the, the part of Niwama. Yes, thank you. That was why I actually raised my hand. Um, I, I, I can't put a time to it, but I know that we're already working. Um, right now, as we speak, we have a hydrological survey from Barrow to Escravos, which has been completed. Um, we have some procurement that we are doing on the drainage of um, the inland waterways from um, Barrow to Escravos. And we are hoping that we should be able to chart the waters from Barrow up to the north. Um, so two private companies are already um, in conversation with us. The concession process has started for the dredging of the inland waterway, at least from Barrow down to Escravos. And uh, we're already in that conversation with ICRC. Their OBCs have already gone. So we are hoping that um, very soon, at least those parts will be charted, and then we can um, improve our inland um, waterway navigation and uh, transport services. So that's already on board, um, just to let you know. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Permanent Secretary. So we'll go on to the next question. Um, and uh, Lucky Free Trade Zone, I think this question will go to you. It says, how does this port uh, influence the price of goods? Uh, secondly, I think you just take a second question so you can take this together, uh, Mrs. Adesua. Um, and also um, Laura Smith. Um, so it says, for new entrants into the maritime sector at the Lekki free trade zone, what are the 
opportunities open to interested SMEs? So if you can take those two questions together, I think it would help. Okay, thank you. So measures put in place to attract port users to, uh, oh no, could you go back up to the question? How, sorry, how does this port influence yes. the price of goods, one? Yeah. Uh, secondly, uh, what are the opportunities that are open to interested SMEs? So uh, to attract um, port users and uh, how we can do it, it's an economy of scale with the largest vessels coming in. The more cargoes you can put on vessels, the less the cost is. Freight rates globally now are coming down anyway, so it puts us in an even better competitive position. The efficiency of the port, the way that the port is operated with the efficiency measures that are in place. So all of these things, you're, you're looking at reducing the dwell time. Uh, I'm not mistaken, the dwell in a puffer now is in excess of 15 days. So we're looking to reduce that by the measures we put in, the scanning equipment that we have that can scan uh, a container every 30 seconds. So the whole essence of the port is to reduce the dwell time. And with the economy of scale of the larger vessels coming to the port, it reduces the freight rate. In relation to our uh, lucky free trade zone and the SMEs, well, that's not really a question that I can answer, only that um, the, free, the free trade zone itself offers attractive uh, concessions through taxations, et cetera, from the government, which allows the setup of um, small business enterprises within the free trade zone, and they can experience the concessions that the government give through uh, less taxes, et cetera. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and I think to be, I, I think there will be obviously there are things around the supply chain for this. So SMEs who currently offer services around things around the supply chain, there will be opportunities around that. So I think that is another answer as well to that question. Uh, thank you very much, um, Lucky Fitch. So the next question I have here, um, it says, what measures are put in place to attract port users? to Lekki Deep Sea Port. Um, Engineer Eze, do you want to take this as well? Engineer Eze, the same measures okay. are put in place to, to attract port users to Lekki Deep Sea Port. Okay. Um, like I also mentioned uh, when I spoke last, uh, we have said uh, 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 we we'll reach out to uh, port users, uh, both within the country and then outside the country, especially within the West African sub-region. And then uh, we'll also uh, uh, um, uh, uh, organize uh, exhibitions, attend seminars, you know, and then uh, let people know that we have a world-class facility here in Lekki and that they stand to you know, uh, gain a lot because the efficiency will be high and then the port costs, you know, will be reduced. Like when the operators spoke to you, they talked about uh, the fact that uh, a container vessel, once it bursts, they will have about uh, five ship to shore cranes that will be working on the vessel. So that means uh, within a very short time, we will to discharge the cargo you know, uh, on board these vessels. And that will reduce the turnaround time. That's, all these have cost implications. And so if the turnaround time is reduced, the unit cost of cargo that has been brought into that lake will obviously be reduced. And then what else? The port users will also benefit from that price, and that makes the port more competitive. So that on its own uh, is going to create an appeal for port users to patronize the key deep sea port. You know, apart from the fact that you know we will organize a promotions, attend conventions, reach out to port users within and outside you know uh, the country. So and we will do this in collaboration with the operators of uh, Lake Deep Sea Port. Because I'm sure they also have you know, a plan, a strategy to also reach out to port users, but globally, because the shipping lines, they all have their own networks. You know, most of these shipping lines, when they discover you know, that they have a lot to gain you know, uh, uh, by bringing cargo to this port, uh, it, it doesn't take them time to also you know, uh, uh, increase their patronage of our ports. I think these are some of the strategies. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, it's another question, even though it says, it says, please for MPA, is there any substantial plan for intermodal transportation like the rail lines? 
uh, I think the peers might want to help us here on that question. Thank you very much. Um, talking about intermodal transportation, um, when I made my remark, I actually said that one of the things we're looking at is evacuating goods um, through the rail line. So having a rail connection from Lekki Deep Seaport right now to join the existing um, Lagos Ibado um, rail line. Um, for Apapa, right, um, Apapa Port, we already have a rail line that gets to APMT terminal. And so um, goods can be evacuated by rail um, um, from Apapa ports. Uh, of course, we're hoping to extend our rail services to Tinkan Island port as part of the Lagos Ibado rail services. So um, in future, what we look at for every port that will be constructed in the country, there'll be rail services getting right to the port to evacuate goods because um, having those amounts of tonnages on the road is not good for our road. And we actually have a law that says you shouldn't have more than 30 tons on the road, but we can't implement that till we have alternatives. So good rail linkages to all the ports and uh, batch services to all the ports. That's the only way we can um, move those um, high tonnages out of the ports to the interland. And so this is in plan for both existing and the new um, ports that are coming on board. And just to mention that from what we already have, the flatbed badges can actually move containers from Lagos to Onicha, from Potako to Onicha. Niwa has done these trials in the past. So we're encouraging the um, badge operators to actually come on board and try to move goods out of the ports on badges. Yes, for the Lekki Deep Sea port, because it's a deep sea, you need the ocean going um, badges to be able to do that. But these are things that are available in Nigeria. And we just encourage more private investors to invest in uh, ocean going badges so that that way we can actually focus on evacuating goods from there by badges. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Permanent Secretary. Uh, the next question again goes to you, Ma. Uh, it says, what measures have been put in place for optimizing the implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement through the Lekki Deep Sea Port? Okay, you know, um... Talking about the road corridors, I mean, Federal Ministry of Transportation is also involved in this. And uh, the corridor, the Alcon corridor is a very active one. We have a lot of um, freight offices along those paths that are 100% completed or close to completion. So that's on the Alcon corridor. The same thing happens in the, happening in the Otter Axis too. So we are ready for those things, but the key thing is having those conversations with the Nigerian um, custom services and all the other agencies that operate at the borders. But in terms of physical construction for um, the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? For the corridors, you know, the, the, uh, um, like the immigration points, we talk about the Semekrake border, we talk about the uh, Nkome Fum border, all those ones have been commissioned. The Nkome Fum border is on the axis of Cameroon, and all the agencies are there, the operational, same thing with Semekrake. But we need to be able to um, galvanize our conversation with all the other agencies that are involved at, um, at the borders for the inspection of goods, so that once the goods take off from one location to the other, they are not going to be stopped by multiple checkpoints, which we tend to have more in the Nigerian end. And I know those conversations have started. And I think Nigeria is getting uh, well positioned to be able to tap into the African Continental Free Trade uh, Agreement that we're signature to. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much, um, Pierce. 
Um, well, as we said, we're going to take four questions. We're taking more than four. Um, and at this point, I don't even see any other, other questions. And any other further questions, I guess you can reach out to any of the panelists. So at this point, please, we'd like all panelists put on their videos. Let's take a picture of all the panelists. So please, if, if your video is not on this, you need to put your video on because it would help for them to be able to take the pictures um, adequately. So please, I see one or two people who your videos are not on. So if your videos are, are, are not on, please put on your video so they can take the pictures. Um, so we have just one or two minutes to do that. Um, yeah, two minutes just to do that. Okay. Um, I think they've had the pictures. Well, uh, at this point, I would like to now hand it over. So thank you so much, panelists. And at this point, I would like to hand over back to the Maritime Practice Group um, to take over from here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Emmanuel, for that well-conducted and precise. I understand the way you are just uh, trying to make sure that panelists keep to time. And that has made us to at least get right up with the panelists on time. So I will be calling on my practice head in the Maritime Practice Group. He's also a partner with us at Olisabakoba Lego, Mr. Shinedu Neke, to give us the closing remarks for this webinar. Mr. Chinedu, please. Yeah. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. So my name is Chinedu Neke, the head maritime practice group of Olisabakoba Lego. I have the honor of proposing our vote of thanks. I would like to thank everyone for participating in this webinar. Since Charity Bita I would like to start by thanking the host, Maritime Practice Group of OAL, and OAL in general, for this beautiful event. We are very grateful to our special guest, Dr. Magdalene Ajani, Permanent Secretary, Federal Ministry of Transport, Every represented by Mrs. Oyemumi Afiz Oyebwenga. He drew large benefits to be derived from Lake Bixi Port and plans to make the Nigerian coast waters navigable throughout the year. We are very grateful, man. In a special way, we thank the senior part of OL, Dr. Olisa Bagoba, whose name is synonymous with maritime law in Nigeria. We also thank our managing partner, Mrs. Yvonne Ezekiel. A push and encouragement to the OAL Maritime Practice Group. We are grateful to Mr. Aminu, Alaji Aminu Uma, President of Nigerian Chamber of Shipping, ever represented by Mr. Musa Saidu, General Manager, Sea Transport Nigeria Limited, and board member Nigerian Chamber of Shipping, for the keynote address. We also thank, in a special way, Mrs. Ife Yungwa Akerele, the Vice President of Nigerian Chamber of Shipping, for our firm support, which made this event possible. I'm also not forgetting the moderator, Madame Milola Emmanuel, the General Manager, Lagos Waterways Authority, last one for all the time he allowed me to really interrupt his own executive work during the planning stage for leading the discussion webinar today. We are very grateful also to our panelists who spoke on the topic 
from the standpoints of your areas of operation, from the promoter's point of view, where from Mr. Lawrence Smith, he told us that the port has the ability to handle the biggest vessels in the world. That the system is completely automated. He also told the economic impact on the communities and opportunities presented by the port. And also, this is Adesu Aladoja, the executive operator of, of Lake Port. He approached the speech from, from the promoter's point of view. Let us know the significant factors in Lake Port, such as the collaboration, collaboration between the federal government and Lagos state government to make things work. We also hear from the regulator's perspective from Mr. Mohamed Berototo, director of Nigerian Post Authority, represented by engineer Okechu Eze, the assistant general manager, research and statistics of NPA. Told us what NPA has done to improve efficiency at the port. He also stated that the preparedness of NPA to support the Lakey port to realize the objectives of the port. I also thank Princess Dr. Bihastro, the Executive Vice Chairman, ENL Consortium, represented by Mr. Mark Watch. Executive Director of Operations. He approached the topic from the operator's point of view. He let us know that the port has made it possible for bigger vessels to come to Nigeria. And he termed the port as a game changer. And he said it's imperative for us to work together to fit of the maritime industry. He also uh, discussed the expectations from the federal government on how to make the port work and also highlighted some of the challenges of the maritime industry. We are very grateful, sir. I've not forgotten our beautiful audience and every other person who is part of this webinar. The event is typical of OAL's commitment to advancing the growth of the maritime sector in Nigeria. And you have all contributed to make it a success. Thank you all. We are all happy and grateful to all of you for coming. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. Thank, you. Thank you, Mr. Chinedu Neke. On that note, I hereby bring this webinar to us. Uh, successful conclusion, and I thank everybody that has made our time to be part of this webinar. It's far enriching, it's insightful, it's engaging, and I'm, I'm very sure that it's a time well spent. Thank you all, and do enjoy the rest of the day. Thank, thank you, you very much. The pointer that thank I you. was here left, not represented by anybody when he was giving his vote of thanks. Thank you. I'm thank sorry, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Jenny. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank, thank you. you, madam. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hey. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Thanks. Nice.